What's up everyone, you got Mind Circus here with you and another Guild Wars 2 new player tip and today we are going to be taking a look at the home instance. But before we get started, if you are new to the channel, new to Guild Wars 2 or just haven't done so yet, I am currently farming likes and subscribes in order to build the channel and if you'd hook me up with one of those down below the video, that would be greatly appreciated. And with that out of the way, let's get into our topic here, and it's the home instance. What is the home instance? How do I find my home instance? How do I get in my home instance? And what can I do with my home instance are going to be some of the things we're looking at. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is exactly what the home instance is. And the home instance is kind of player housing, kind of not. Basically, it's a little instance that you get that you can do a bunch of things with. You can add some kind of QOL features and some other things to it, and we'll get into those uh, options here in a little bit. It's not actually player housing in that you can't kind of decorate it like maybe in other games, but it's actually pretty functional. So we'll get into uh, a few of the different things. The first thing being, how do we actually find our home instance? So let's get into how we're going to access our home instance at this point. And the easy thing to keep in mind is there is a portal to your home instance in every capital city. So this means in Holbrek, this means in Divinity's Reach, The Grove, Ratasum, and Black Citadel, there will be a place where we can easily access our home instance. What I'm actually gonna do down in the description below is put some chat codes down there for you. Now, if you've never used a chat code, below uh, each of the locations in the description, there will be a slightly little cryptic string of text, which you will then copy to your clipboard with control C. And then you'll come back into here into the game and you will paste it and we will hit enter and you will see this actually generates a waypoint for us and we can go here. So taking a look at the map here, we can see we are at the Salma Waypoint, and the Salma Waypoint is where we're going to find the human home instance. Now, one of the things to understand is that while you are, um, while you have actually a uh, entrance to your home instance in every of the capital cities, it doesn't matter what race you enter them with. So I can absolutely come in here on my Asura into the human home instance. And one of the benefits of that is that it doesn't matter which city I go into and which of the home instances I go into, anything that I've unlocked in that home instance will be available from there. But let's take a little look quick before we go in about the locations of all the other ones. We are going to be here in the uh, human home instance in Divinity's Reach, which we can access at this door right next to the Salma Waypoint. We won't go in yet. The Norn home instance will be located in Holbrek by the uh, waypoint that I have put in the chat codes down below, and we just have to walk over to it right here. It's pretty convenient. The Asura home instance will be found near the Magic Hat away, uh, Court waypoint, and it will be just over here we can access it. The Solvari home instance will be located near Ronin's waypoint, and we can just walk over here. And the Char home instance will be located near the Mustering Ground waypoint. And we can just walk over here and locate our home instance here in the Char home world. So now that we know how to find our home instance and how to get into them, we'll take a look at one of them and we'll come back here to Divinity's Reach and we'll go into the human home instance. And as you see, not only are there a lot of items in my home instance that you may not see in yours, there are also a lot of cats around here, and we'll get into that. A couple of the things that we can do with our home instance, um, one of them is a lot of achievements. Now, certain story steps will actually go and unlock things, and a good example is rocks here, or mocks here, or docks here, or whatever he is. Um, and he actually is unlocked by doing episode five of season three. There's a story step there where you actually rescue him in Draconis Mons. Now, when I come back to him here, I can actually click on him, and he has the opportunity to change the background music in my home instance if I like. He's given me a few different options. So 
a lot of different options actually so there's one of the things that you can do um, the cats are another one um, there are a series of achievements and I will link the wiki article down below about feeding hungry cats across the world and uh, we unlock quite a few different cats so uh, this little uh, snow leopard cub here is one of them we'll take a look at another bunch that I've unlocked over here which I find particularly entertaining so another of the uh, cat collecting achievements you have are these world versus world cats which were actually a little difficult to get um we've got the blue cat bander here we have the yellow cat bander over there and in a few moments they will be uh done shouting at their team to stay on tag and uh eat their food etc and they'll get into a little fight And another of the cat collecting achievements here we can take a look are these little cats here which are actually fighting and in order to get these is a collection where you walk around feeding cats from uh, or a cat with a member of each different class uh, in the game and you get little cats that uh, represent each class and fight and if you take a look the ranger cats got a little juvenile frog there and the necro cat casts some fear and things like that they're pretty adorable and they'll go at it all day there's some snowball fighting cats and some other things i won't spoil it too much for you there's a, a lot of really fun achievements so one of the other things you may notice here at this point is i've actually got some gathering nodes here in my home instance and these are gained in a variety of different ways some of them are i uh, purchased off the trading post but actually come very rarely out of black lion chests i haven't gotten any out of chests but people who get them sometimes will sell them on the trading post for a bit of money um, some of the other things that I have here are actually gained by achievements and stuff like that. This king-sized candy corn node is a gained at Halloween. And that means for the rest of the year I can come up here and gather off this thing a couple of times a day and put some candy corn away. And when Halloween rolls around I will absolutely have a whole lot of candy corn to go with. Another thing I've picked up here is this quartz crystal formation, and this I have purchased, I believe I purchased this with laurels. Um, there's a, a couple of home instances at the laurel vendor. Uh, this one every day I can walk up to this and just uh, mine uh, a little bit of quartz. And one of the really nice things about this home instance node is it tends to drop uh, charge quartz crystals uh, every once in a while. So that is a big one. Uh, we have uh, this here, which is our dragon pinata, which if you recall during um, Dragon Bash, we can actually get one of these. And we can smack this every day for some Zytaffy. We have our baubles, which we get during Super Adventure Box, which we can mine every day for some baubles and then when super venture box rolls around we'll have a whole lot of extra currency a couple of the other things available uh, are on the gem store i won't go uh, too much into that the black lion hunters boards etc um but uh one of the important things that i actually find about the home instance is to come down here and I've got currency nodes for each of the living world maps so I got difluorite crystals here and if I roll around over here you're gonna see I have some bloodstone crystals and this is a pretty quick and easy way to pick up three bloodstone crystals I will however um, warn you quite a bit about Lady Wisteria Whiskington here um, she is the most powerful boss in the game and if you think I'm joking you should go out and get her and find out for yourself coming over here obviously I have my winterberry node which I would have gotten bitter frost frontier now most of these are gonna cost you know the unbound or volatile magic and uh, a whole bunch of gold um, each of them will be 50 gold apiece kind of thing in terms of the value of these it's kind of up to you um, you know the home instance is largely a place for uh, completionists um, but that said you know with a little bit of work into your home instance as you can see with all these gathering nodes that I have around here it actually becomes pretty lucrative in terms of time spent I can come in here for five ten minutes every day and go ahead and uh, gather all these things and make a little bit of money or put some currencies aside one last thing I'll show you guys here is up here now if we've gone through and uh, completed our chef's training and taken our cooking up to 500 we will get a free garden plot this garden plot will be good for um, getting seeds uh, that we can use for ascending cooking 
Highly recommend if you're getting into the Ascended Cooking thing, you're going to be doing it on a regular basis. Make sure that you're coming by here into your home instance every day and uh, generating the uh, generating the seeds that you need here to uh, to do that ascended cooking it's a, a fair bit of value and even if you aren't you can go ahead and you know send those to somebody who is taking part in the system or the other thing you can do is obviously just sell those on the tp so there you have it the home instance um don't want to flex too much i obviously have spent a lot of time and money on my home instance uh it's it's one of those things that i kind of do when i've run out of content in the game i'll start uh making little pushes on my home instance and uh, bringing it up to snuff so to speak but uh um the other thing to to understand is most of those gathering nodes you can absolutely let your friends into your home instance and let them gather them um it's a pretty easy way to to, you know, after a little while and it's an investment of time and money, make a make a daily stop in your home instance and uh, generate yourself a little bit of uh, currencies and, you know, cash, etc. So really, that's about it. It's the down and dirty of the system. Won't get too far into it. At this point, I will thank you very much for watching. I'm going to remind you to have fun in game and min-max your real life. And we will see you again in the mists.